A very good morning to all my dear friends. I hope you all are doing good. This is Prashant Mavani and I warmly welcome all of you to Study IQ. Dear friends, uh, there is no substitute for hard work and this is said by Thomas A. Edison. I'm sure you know Thomas Alva Edison, one of the most famous scientists in the world. And uh, if you go through his life, right, I have uh, read so much about him and uh, I know that even uh, whilst he was traveling in the train, he used to uh, carry all his uh, equipments and he used to do some sort of experiments uh, whilst traveling as well from uh, station A to station B. And uh, you learn how to use each and every second or minutes in your life from Thomas Alva Edison. And this is right as well. There is no substitute at all. Our mind gives us all the tricks, right? To take a shortcut and ignore this and take the soft path but there is no soft path right we have to train our mind to uh, to walk and run on this hard work path with this uh, dear friends uh, study iq at present pr is providing up to 40 percent discount now this is valid till 14th december and uh, you can see the range of our pen drive and tablet courses uh, much more on studyiq.com do not forget to check it out now let's start with uh, editorial the first one that we have is uh, pertaining to vesenar agreement now where do you find this vesenar right it is in uh, netherlands and uh, you find it it is a sort of uh, municipality or a small city uh, that is here on the bank of uh, north sea this Vesenar agreement uh, was founded in 1996, right, and uh, is clubbed with uh, mechanisms such as Nuclear Suppliers Group and the Missile Technology Control Regime. You know that uh, we are part of uh, MTCR. A couple of days ago, we talked about this thing called MTCR and uh, how our entry to MTCR has uh, helped us to increase the missiles that we have say for example the latest one is BrahMos right we can increase the range of this thing we can also sell missiles uh, to other countries and things like that so MTCR membership we have got it then you have Australian group and uh, this NSG Australian group uh, I will uh, take you through what it is all about but this nuclear suppliers group we are not member of it and uh, one of the main reason is China a couple of years ago when uh, the meeting was going to take place in South Korea at that point of time India was lobbying and uh, in fact uh, the visit of Prime Minister uh, to five countries at that point of time that included Switzerland, Mexico, USA and other countries as well at that point of time uh, it was Barack Obama's era I'm talking about and uh, at that point of time uh, Prime Minister was lobbying and uh, there were many countries that were uh, ready to support us but uh, the way NSG works, even if one country denies your entry or if uh, one country is against uh, your membership, uh, then you cannot be uh, made a part of this NSG. So this is uh, basically a sort of um, background uh, regarding all these uh, different agreements and now we have uh, became a member of this uh, Vesenar group. We are 42nd member. Uh, of this Vesenar agreement. Now uh, it is a multilateral export control regime and uh, part of the main job of uh, you can say Vesenar is uh, to ensure that uh, there is security and stability right and um, it promotes uh, transparency and uh, responsibility so the things or the dealings uh, that have been done by different countries in terms of uh, this uh, weapons or technologies that can be used or technologies that have uh, dual uh, utility like say for example nuclear uh, things associated or technologies associated with nuclear day. now you know that uh, it can be used for producing electricity as well as it can be produced it can be used for producing weapons uh, so here the main job of this Vesenar agreement is to ensure that uh, no sort of uh, weapon making you know weapon making things are promoted and uh, it also keeps an eye on on this uh, nuclear exchange and by exchanging members do exchange uh, you know reports with each other uh, so that uh, everyone can keep an eye on each other so in this way this is uh, basically trying to uh, to ensure that there is no destabilization no countries are uh, engaged in in increasing the arsenal of their weapons and things like that now they 
the unique thing or why we are discussing this thing in detail is because that India has got membership uh, even though India is not or India has not signed this NPT that is non nuclear non proliferation treaty now dear friends a non proliferation proliferation basically means uh, uh, to increase uh, something in huge quantity a drastic increase in quantity of uh, anything is called proliferation and non proliferation of nuclear nuclear non proliferation basically means that uh, you will not increase your uh, nuclear weapons right you will not uh, proliferate it so india has not signed it uh, because uh, pakistan has not signed it and if we sign this npt then uh, there are many controls right uh, or there are many things that will be applied on us and because of this thing pakistan can bully us and things like that so we this is one of the main reason why we have not signed it but even though uh, accepting us as a member indicates that uh, the credit or you can say the trust on india when it comes to nuclear weapons or things associated with nuclear energy and nuclear weapon is quite high and uh, the countries are ready to trust india uh, the other thing is uh, this australian group right uh, it focuses on biological and chemical weapons and uh, it would be easier for us now we are not a member of this australian group yet but uh, it would be easier uh, to get an entry to this group as well because china is not a member of this australian group the other thing is that uh, the things have changed quite a lot uh, dear friends uh, you know that uh, once upon a time we were under sanctions of usa and uh, because uh, uh, we did uh, this uh, nuclear test and uh, after that it was in uh, 2005 when we broke out this one two three agreement one two three agreement basically is uh, india us nuclear deal and uh, during this uh, one two three agreement india said that we are going to separate our program when it comes to civilian use as well as a military use of nuclear program so we have uh, divided it right we have separate uh, separate uh, you can say programs when it comes to nuclear and uh, this has uh, created our uh, our image uh, we, we are quite reputed in terms of trustworthy as well because you know that even japan has uh, signed uh, uh, with us a nuclear treaty um, a, a civil nuclear treaty and uh, japan you know is the only country that has faced uh, nuclear weapons uh, so uh, when japan is uh, going ahead with us uh, then it indicates that uh, we are quite reliable and uh, hopefully uh, this sort of things will help us will create some pressure on china because uh, what china wants is china wants uh, pakistan as well uh, to become part of this nsg and uh, of course uh, no other country will be happy to allow pakistan to become part of this nsg and this is one of the main reason why we are not able to um, enter this nsg so that's everything uh, regarding it i th i think uh, we will find some more articles in future uh, based on this thing now let's see uh, uh, moving on to another item and this is a very important one as well it is pertaining to united nation you know that uh, we have talked about this thing that united nation and there have been many articles as well uh, asking or uh, talking about changes in united nation security council or general assembly and things like that because we still know that uh, uh, apparently united nation is a product of or, or you can say a product of post world war ii world and today we are living in 2017 2018 is just around the corner so things have changed quite a lot around the world right the countries that were weak and poor are not weak and poor anymore the countries who were powerful are not that powerful anymore so things have changed quite a lot and uh, so should uh, this international organizations too uh, should uh, change and they should be in sync with uh, the reality of uh, uh, today's today's time but anyways uh, let's see what we have got here now uh, this one is uh, talking about uh, congo drc not only but the reason why congo drc is in news because uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, nearly a week ago nearly a few of uh, united nations uh, peacekeeping people were killed right and uh, this is very sad of course because uh, they go there for uh, peacekeeping right uh, they help uh, the people of the country in which you have this sort of turmoil going on and things like that uh, so you have this congo uh, Demo democratic republic of uh, congo 
Uh, this is the country here. You can see that it is surrounded by many other countries and uh, uh, equator is also passing through this Congo. Congo River is there and you know um, uh, it is a country like has been in news. You know it is very poor country and trouble and things like that have has always been here uh, for a very long period of time. And uh, dear friends, uh, that's basically everything about Congo. So let's uh, move on. You can spend some couple of minutes after it and see the countries that are surrounding it and things like that. One more thing that I would like to highlight here is that it is not a landlocked country. As you can see here, this is a city or a port called Banana of uh, this Congo uh, that is on Atlantic Ocean. So let's uh, move ahead. Right. So uh, the thing is... Uh, the way things are going on around the world, uh, uh, when I when we were talking about this uh, death of uh, 15 peacekeepers and five soldiers, right? Uh, they were most of them uh, were from Tanzania. And now the thing is, you know, Tanzania is not UK or Australia or USA, isn't it? France or Germany. Uh, there was no mention of uh, this incident in Indian media and even if you see the observe the world media then you will find that it was not that much reported as it should be and uh, one of the main reason is because uh, countries too there is a sort of uh, you know it's not uh, the the world is not that fair right when I say it's not that fair you can clearly see there is a sort of bias uh, I will give you some examples right uh, uh, do you know when uh, this uh, France uh, Paris attack took place? Uh, at that point of time, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, there was an attack in uh, in in Afghanistan as well, uh, and uh, there was an attack in 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 a country in Africa too, um, nearly within the same period. But then as well, we at that point of time. Uh, it was uh, been widely reported about Paris rather than uh, this places. Of course, because uh, Associated pr uh, uh, Associated France Press, uh, then you have Reuters and then you have other international medias, right? This uh, developed countries media, they have world outreach. And that is one of the main reasons why you still hear the word like Middle East and um, you know many a times I have given clarification about the POK as well the map of uh, POK because uh, this media is right they have uh, they have reached around the world and they do uh, make a difference uh, they have this power to uh, you know to give or whether not to give weight to any particular topic so anyways uh, this is a reality uh, in which we are living and now coming to china this article is talking about how things are not going on well with united nation and how uh, rising china can create problems for india now china has been providing it has recently started uh, offering helicopters you know that nowadays china has uh, a very means it is having a very deep pocket means it has money to throw around uh, right so china is offering this uh, chinese uh, helicopters for peacekeeping and things like that if you go back to the history of china and peacekeeping then uh, it was in 1992 when china uh, very reluctantly right it was not happy to contribute in this peacekeeping but uh, later on it said that okay we will and uh, in 1992 it uh, provided some uh, soldiers in 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 cambodia and uh, at present uh, it is uh, it has become the largest troop contributor right largest uh, troop troop contributor when you talk about p5 nations right permanent five you know permanent five you have usa uk france uh, then russia and china so out of this uh, most powerful countries in the world china is the largest troop contributor to this permanent members of united nations security councils out of this in in, in peacekeeping basically and uh, it is uh, it is the third largest uh, contributors uh, contributor in in terms of uh, united nations uh, regular budget so money coming from china in united nation right uh, there is a drastic rise uh, then it is the uh, second largest contributor to peacekeeping budget so you can see that china is injecting huge amount of money and now the thing is right uh, if you add more money the it depends your weight or your uh, you can say your importance will be decided uh, by your contribution that's how you and is working you know usa has many a times ignored 
uh, the things that are decided by us uh, by united nation because uh, you so far uh, you uh, usa was uh, the biggest or in fact it is one of the biggest contributor when it comes to budget of united nation and other things so it can throw its weight right uh, many times it has uh, said and you know recently mr trump said that uh, this uh, share of uh, money uh, should come from different countries as well uh, usa alone cannot afford and will not pay for other countries so this creates a bit of trouble for other countries and uh, in because this because of this reasons usa can exploit this situation so that's how the uh, world works and uh, if you see india right uh, then our voice is not uh, represented as it should be because uh, we don't uh, contribute that much amount of money uh, when you compare ourselves with uh, china 7.92 percent and usa is 22 percent we contribute 0.737 percent to united nation but when you see uh, the troops that we provide right we are uh, one of the largest uh, troop providers peacekeeping force providers uh, in in one of the largest right not the largest but one of the largest and uh, because of this thing we the whole, around the world our soldiers and our country has won a huge amount of uh, soft power people love uh, indian peacekeepers uh, this is not uh, something i am saying out of patriotism this is something that is reality but uh, then as well uh, whenever it comes to appointing important people or whenever it comes to filling up important posts of peacekeeping or united nations uh, right uh, the the countries who are providing money are being given a first chance and this is uh, something that is not fair at all and the way you uh, china is going up you know that it is it, it is contributing money and it is creating many ports you know dual purpose ports we have talked about it you know djibouti it is uh, it it is china's first you can say military base overseas military base and uh, it is going to create some more and uh, it wants to it is like a playground for china djibouti and other places so it will uh, learn from it and it will learn the ropes and uh, then uh, you you will find china will literally take over because usa under this uh, trump's administration is uh, stepping out so that's what uh, these are the things that are going on and uh, india should right uh, the contribution of india should be respected and this is possible if india can get back up of uh, other countries because uh, china and other countries as i've told you a couple of days ago we were discussing that they use their veto powers and china has used uh, its veto power in many places when it comes to peacekeeping in macedonia and zimbabwe and you have myanmar and japan at many uh, point of time it has used misused its veto power uh, this article is about clean air india needs a policy leap it is talking about how we can sort out this problem and uh, it is a very info informative article you get you will get a couple of uh, um, facts uh, that you can use now the thing is as per this lens and commission 19 lakh people die prematurely every year in our country because of air pollution uh, then you have uh, this lungs of children right uh, the the lungs of uh, children in delhi is 10% uh, smaller when you compare it with uh, children of USA and this is again because of uh, pollution air pollution we know Delhi is not only Delhi but uh, other cities as well and same thing happens with uh, this media uh, giving more weight and less weight uh, happens with other Patna was more polluted in in more dangerous situation than Delhi but then as well uh, but, but Delhi was in news because uh, Delhi is a capital so you can these are the things uh, that are going on anyways so at the heart of the problem is carbon dioxide and uh, out of all the greenhouse gases that we see 75% comes from 75% uh, constitutes this car carbon dioxide and uh, we know the reason why because uh, it comes from all different various sources right fossil fuels and burning wood and things like that and uh, of course uh, the way economic activities uh, have gone up uh, we know that uh, this would this is something we can understand that uh, uh, comparing ourselves with 1990s uh, right uh, in 2014 uh, the carbon emission has gone up uh, three times uh, no wonder but uh, this article the good thing about this article is that it is talking about a solution as well now the solution is to tax carbon right uh, that means uh, increase uh, the amount of uh, tax on uh, carbon and uh, it is talking about using this money for 
more green causes uh, that's uh, that sounds uh, fair enough right the other thing is uh, it also talks about the efficiency all the things uh, say for example we cannot replace everything with renewable energy in one go but at the same time what we can do is uh, at, at one hand you can increase uh, this uh, renewable sources right solar and other things on the other side uh, other side what we can do is increase the efficiency of the things or, or the build or, or you can say the factories or you know there are many chimneys you we see um, on the highway that uh, they are emitting huge amount of uh, smoke in the atmosphere so we can make them more efficient uh, we can um, we can reduce uh, the the smoke that is coming out of this uh, factories and uh, other like for example vehicle we are going for uh, this um, bs6 uh, isn't it so these are the changes we can increase uh, efficiency and the other thing is uh, it is talking about this rich and poor balance of course uh, uh, rich people they are going to have cars and they are going to have uh, houses with ac and other things so they are the ones who are going to spend more so uh, tax can be collected from them and uh, you can also increase uh, this sort of green says and there are other ways as well uh, through which you can uh, have a sort of a solid fund for your green courses and uh, this will also impact poor people too right if if they will buy something then they will also pay for it but the benefit that poor people will get out of this thing is more than what they will pay because uh, this article is talking about rather than giving cash uh, in hand uh, it is better to give uh, benefits in uh, in kind uh, that means uh, you provide them with uh, say for example free electricity and uh, you provide them with uh, traveling passes right uh, for a family so that can be used uh, throughout the month and in this thing will uh, uh, will promote uh, public transportation and uh, you know it is much better than one person taking a car and going from place A to B and it is much better that if the person is taking tram or taxi or uh, not taxi but uh, tram or train or, um, or bus so that's how it is uh, it is arguing that this way we can promote uh, people's participation and uh, this way we can keep a fine balance and things like that and uh, it is also saying that uh, if we will uh, work on this green side or if we will increase greenery and if we will decrease this carbon emission then at present uh, this uh, approx three percent of gdp uh, that is uh, being wasted uh, because we are tackling or we are fighting against this uh, pollution induced diseases right uh, this will come down and uh, of course we can utilize this money in some other productive course uh, with this uh, we reach here power powering uh, rural healthcare something similar um, but here it is about solar energy how uh, solar energy can make a sort of positive change in healthcare now uh, dear friends uh, the sad thing is that uh, 38 million indians at present uh, right rely on health facilities uh, that have no access to electricity and you know very well that if you don't have electricity then you have to forget about this life-saving intervention so if uh, something goes wrong then there is no chance of your survival you have to die because of lack of electricity and uh, we know that uh, in our country we have not only poverty but there are other challenges as well geography is a challenge too so the best thing that we can do is create sort of solar clusters right say for example you are living in a remote uh, part of our country so rather than uh, government providing you or um, this whole electricity pipeline coming to you it is better that uh, you set up your own uh, solar plant right and uh, you can produce solar energy and this can be distributed uh, or this can be used within this uh, small cluster of villages uh, so in this way it will bridge the gap of electricity the other thing is uh, if we see this uh, rural health statistics uh, 2016 then we find that uh, india has around 25000 primary health care centers and uh, of them of the functional ones uh, you have 4.6% are still today not having access to electricity which is very sad 4.6 percent and then when you compare it and when you calculate the population that is relying on this four percent then you find that we are talking about huge uh, population the other thing is uh, 
uh, Chhattisgarh has done some experiment with this thing and uh, there is a very you can say uh, successful uh, example uh, is uh, Chhattisgarh uh, 50 percent more patients uh, were saved and uh, the number of uh, deliveries uh, hospitalized delivery took place as well uh, because of uh, because uh, energy was provided or electricity was provided by producing this uh, by electricity was produced from uh, solar source and then it was applied and this has helped in overall operation of healthcare system the other thing that is quite interesting and new here is about disaster prone areas you know uh, areas that are vulnerable to disaster natural disasters like earthquake and others so over there as well you find uh, wherever you have this sort of uh, earthquake say for example then um, electricity will be gone for ages so it is better to have uh, this uh, better to deploy deploy this uh, solar um, cluster uh, solar energy production units and uh, smart grids and things like that so you are connected at least with electricity and you know you can do many things particularly during this sort of disaster you need energy uh, for uh, for treating people in hospitals and uh, for for pro providing food and other things right other basic necessity so that's uh, everything regarding it now we're moving on to this flawed economies uh, this one is a, a sort of a critical argument against uh, an article that was published in hindu uh, on december 4th the name is a misleading hunger index and uh, this article was written by the members of Niti Ayog and this is one of the main ma main reason why this is important as well as uh, this author is also saying that this is one of the main reason that they are um, they are writing or uh, they are highlighting the mistake because if it would have been written by someone else then we can understand but when it is written by Niti Ayog members uh, that means the government is a bit wrong or government has no clue about the reality that's what it looks like because uh, this international food policy research institute it came out with global hunger index uh, if you want to know more about it then i have uh, a video for you special video it is available both in hindi and english it is on our youtube channel so do check it out we have uh, it is a special video lecture on this global hunger index uh, so so it, this uh, GHI has uh, given us uh, rank 100 and uh, Niti Aayog members in this article they were arguing that uh, this is not right and uh, this is all flawed and things like that but that is not right because uh, the thing is 26% uh, increase in per capita production that's what has been argued by them that uh, increase in uh, uh, food production means uh, people will have more food with them but that is not right even amartya sen got nobel prize for uh, in economics uh, not nobel prize for that thing but uh, he said about this accessibility right he added this accessibility and uh, say for example if your country is india is producing huge amount of grains but if those grains are not accessible to you then that grains are of no use at all so accessibility as well as distribution proper distribution in right quantity and quality is important if you want to get rid of hunger and uh, fight this malnourishment and things like that but uh, we have uh, different uh, challenges in our country we have uh, inequality when it comes to food distribution as well you know we have uh, gender inequality when it comes to food the first glass of uh, the last glass of milk will go to a boy rather than a girl so this is a thing that is prevalent then you have caste religion regional variation in excess uh, this, uh, this these are the things that are even today uh, observed in our country and uh, this one uh, this uh, niti ayog uh, members were arguing that uh, most of 70% 70.5% .70 of uh, uh, this ghi is talking about children but uh, the thing is uh, children require more calories uh, when you compare them with adults so if children are not getting enough food or right quantity of balanced diet then uh, we are making them or pushing them uh, towards uh, this under nutrition under nutrition and uh, this stunting and wasting and things like that so this is one of the main reason it is saying that uh, this article is talking that uh, Niti Ayog members should have uh, gone through him. It means they should have done their research. 
And because uh, this way, if government is not sure about what is the reality, then how can you expect that they will make a policy that will fight this thing? And it is also talking in the end portion about this calorie thing. Now, uh, let me add something regarding calorie. Calorie is more sort of Western idea. In India, we have always believed, right, if you go back to... Uh, to yogic age and all those places and this is scientific thing i'm talking about it's not uh, um, it's not you can say emotional thing right it is a very scientific thing that we are talking about or mythical thing see every person requires of course balanced diet right uh, micronutrition and things like that everything so balanced diet should cover all these things that are required by the body but the calorie thing is a, a very customized thing right uh, 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 two twins right uh, one would require uh, say for example 2000 calorie the other one would require 3000 calorie it depends right uh, one will have four rotis the other will have two rotis their performance would be the same so uh, this is a concept calorie and 1800 calorie and things like that are more sort of western concept but it is quite different from our country's concept and here you have two articles one is about the political scenario in nepal and this one is about uh, political scenario in america you can ignore them right uh, it is no use for your studies and uh, let's go through the news item world trade organization meeting is going on uh, we uh, discussed uh, yesterday an editorial on it and uh, the food security thing now you know uh, why this uh, thing is a problem because uh, subsidies that are provided and uh, India has clearly stated that we cannot uh, sign or we cannot agree on those uh, things on which uh, the developed countries are trying us uh, to sign because uh, we cannot ignore or the developing world cannot ignore 800 million hungry people right undernourished people around the world not in India but around the world total somewhere around 800 million hungry people so uh, this is not going to be fair the other thing is india has also taken a sort of hard stand on e-commerce investment facilities and uh, norms for small firms access to global market now let me tell you that uh, this is a, an ongoing thing so we will find articles and editorials uh, once uh, once everything is over uh, so of course we will discuss at that point of time um, the in and out of uh, this uh, or whatever the uh, the outcome is of this WTO but let me quickly take you through this news uh, item whatever we have uh, it talks about this 1998 declaration on global e-commerce what is happening is that uh, at present there is no uh, there is as per this 1998 uh, declaration um, the member countries will continue their current price uh, practice of non imposing custom duties right and it is a sort of temporary thing every two years uh, it gets a sort of extension and India has said that uh, this is not fair if you want to, to carry on this thing then you have to agree with uh, this non-violation complaints uh, under TRIPS. TRIPS uh, stands for this trade related aspects of intellectual property rights uh, agreement and this NVC which India is saying that if you want to go ahead with this 1998 thing then you have to go allow us to do this NVC and NVC is basically a government can go to the WTO dispute settlement body even when an agreement of the WTO has not been violated right uh, so India wants uh, this thing for its own protection so uh, let's see uh, with this uh, Russia has uh, said the you know Russian foreign minister is in India and he has said that we should have a chat with Taliban we should take them on board and discuss things with them uh, which is something against uh, the strategy of our country it is argued that USA has uh, used uh, all the forces and all the things, but uh, they have not produced any sort of result. Uh, a Bangladeshi origin man tried to create a blast in New York, but uh, luckily, right, uh, fortunately, he failed. Uh, only minor injuries uh, took place to like three people, and uh, he himself uh, is injured. So. Uh, thank god uh, for it uh, frdi uh, regarding this uh, financial resolution and dispute deposit insurance bill 2017 i am going to come out with a special video lecture on this thing today so uh, all those interested uh, aspirants uh, 
uh, do not forget to tune into studyiq.com make sure you have subscribed and also turned on the notification bell so you will be notified so you will find um, a special lecture on this thing and uh, government has explained again that uh, this all the all the things uh, that are there in the market or the rumors that are that that your money will be, you will lose your money as a depositor and things like that nothing like that is going to happen and government has set up uh, this NICCERT you know this uh, www.upsc.nic.gov and things like that so NIC right uh, so this uh, uh, NIC and CERT CERT stands for uh, this uh, um, government's organ uh, that uh, protects against uh, that protects uh, against any sort of uh, cyber attack right c e r t i n emergency response team and things like that so it is uh, this n i c c r t is going to add uh, you can say it will monitor and uh, it will it will help in early detection and uh, mitigation of cyber attacks uh, ravi shankar prasad said that uh, the way uh, digitization is spreading around the world and in our country at the same time the risks associated with cyber crime are going up and we have to have cyber warriors uh, that can protect us uh, with this dear friends uh, we come to the end portion of this uh, discussion don't forget to make the most out of this up to 40 percent discount here are your answers and this mountain range uh, prana and uh, uruguay these are the rivers i have provided you a map and uh, holland and today's question which of the following tribes belong to the Kalaharis, right? Uh, Hoten, Tots, uh, Zulus, uh, Kyrgyz or Ab origins. Uh, the second one is uh, President submits her res uh, resignation to Vice President, Prime Minister, Speaker of Lok Sabha and uh, Chief Justice and identify the person that you can see on your screen with this uh, don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel dear friends uh, your like matters a lot so please uh, if you have learned then please give us your like i will share this uh, pdf file on prashant mamani i have made a small mistake here it is uh, prashant mamani so uh, do check out my facebook page and do share the lecture with other people too i will see you all soon till then enjoy your studies goodbye for now jai hind